with the grace of Christ, brethren, we will continue our lesson from the book of Genesis. Read from chapter 16 and verse 15. Chapter 16 and verse 15. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son whom Agar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to, uh, to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be, to, to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised, every male child in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with money from any stranger who is not your descendant. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Then God said to Abram, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and it shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is one hundred years old? And shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. And God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year. Then he finished talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. So Abraham took Ishmael his son, all who were born in his house and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very same day as God has said to him. Abram was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very same day, Abraham was circumcised, and his son Ishmael, and all the men of his house, born in the house or bought with money from a stranger, were circumcised with him. Amen. 
when Abram was 75 years old, he was found in the land of Canaan and God promised him a son. And until he was 86 years old, nothing had happened from what God had promised him. 11 years had passed by. And it was at that time that Sarah suggested to, to give her maid servant a hagger to bear a child and she bare and begat, begot Ishmael. And so Sarah and Abraham, uh, they were satisfied satisfied because the promise of God was fulfilled, of course. And this is a delicate point that the promise of God was completed with the initiative of a man. But this is not the completion of a promise. This is a, the action of man. This is an action of man. Of course, they were completely satisfied. They had their son, the son of the maid servant. But when he was 99 years old, God decided to visit, to appear to Abram, and to change everything in his life. He had been trained for 100 years. There were 100 years of promises, and 100 years passed by. And for the first time, the Bible says that God appeared. He appeared before Abram and said to him, He revealed to him and he revealed himself as an almighty God with a new name. Till that point, he knew him as Jehovah, the Lord um, um, of, of hosts. Now he reveals himself with a new name, that now I, I hold everything in my hand. This is something that um, no one should forget that everything in our personal life, in our family life, in our church life, in our country, in the world, everything is in the hands of God. The only one who can change the plan of God and to destroy it is man himself, that is, the man of God. Only the man of God can destroy the work of God and the plans of God which he holds in his hands and he can do this um, by his um, um, with his unbelief and his negative actions though Abram acted in this way and he had a child Ishmael Ishmael God being faithful to his promise he appeared before him and my beloved brethren, I have to point out this, that God makes great changes in our lives. And he does this when we um, become quiet, as Sarah and Abraham did, regardless um, of the word, uh, if our word is right. Till they were, he was 96 years old, he was in anxiety, and he was thinking, who will inherit me? And his mind was thinking that his um, servant would do so. And that's why he um, let Ishmael to be born. And for this reason, the Lord says, Be quiet, calm. I am the Lord, the Almighty. And our Lord, Jesus Christ, says this so beautifully. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Do not care about anything, but first of all, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the rest God will add them. It is very important that uh, this trouble that we might have in our heart should go away, that comes um, because of the things that we hear, and we lose our faith, and we should ask God to bring within us his peace that surpasses every mind. Because when you are in peace and in quiet, in quietness, then God can work and cooperate with you within a completely different way uh, than the man knows at that point. Now God visits Abram with a completely different way. And he tells him things that are very great. He is about to change the global economy. First of all, the, con uh, the 
the, this period of uh, innocence that Abraham lived, then came this period of, of, of conscience, of consciousness with Noah, of, of righteousness, and now a period will come of faith. But this changes. I have to point it, this out that um, they appear in a man's life when a man is an infant till he's three years old he's um, in a period of innocence it doesn't have um, cunningness and anything might happen the children of the saints are sent but when he comes um, to the age from three to six years old the word of God says that the heart of man has is evil which comes from um, consciousness then to that child from 6 to 12 years old comes the childhood and there my beloved brethren it is necessary that the parent that the parents and the brethren should know that they get in a period of faith so when the, it's young it's in innocence in conscious in consciousness what the child um, the child recognizes righteousness and when he's in childhood then faith um, is born in a child's heart and the child starts to believe and when he's in an adolescence then you put bind boundaries uh, to the child and after eight being eight years old and he becomes a man now God is about to make a great change he would change from this uh, period of and he will get to the this period of faith and with this man that he chose and to whom he spoke at some point he told him um, get out from your family and from your land to the place that I will lead you and so though he was 99 years old and Ishmael was 13 years old the the Bible says that the first time the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him I am Almighty God and in order to fulfill the things that I'm about to tell you you should take heed to walk before me first of all to walk before me in my presence you will walk um, right before me you won't um, draw away from me that is you won't lose your faith your um, your prayer and be blameless what is this mean was Abram perfect at that point he had uh, done many mistakes what is this mean to be blameless to be perfect it means that if you are close to me then you will know my will and your perfection is to walk in it. And now he continues. This great change. Your name shall not be Abram, which means a glorious father. But I'm changing, I, I change your name. You will be called Abraham, which means a father of many nations. Brethren, Abraham was one man. And think about it, and when we read the Bible, it's good uh, for us to, to, to place um, ourselves there. God said to Abraham that I will make you father of many nations. And he said this to a man who was 99 years old. And of course, the mind um, of this man went, his thought went to Ishmael. And he continues and says, I will make you exceedingly. I will increase you. Whatever you might do, whatever you'll do, I will increase it and I will bless it. And nations of, will come out of you and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant a new covenant between me and you. A 
God makes a covenant, which means that I'm giving you something that nothing can break it. This is the will of the one who makes this covenant. No one can change um, a covenant lawfully. So I will make a covenant with you. I will give you things which you could never imagine. Now let us come to our place. By, with the regeneration, the Lord makes a um, covenant. And which is this covenant that He makes with us? It is that I regenerate you in the living hope which you have to preserve it alive. And that is, if you stay, you will inherit everything. You will inherit eternity. Now, this is a covenant on a personal level. God says that I assure you that if because you have believed to whom I have sent and to whom you have called upon, if you continue as I want you to be, then you will inherit everything. The heavenly things. You will be my child. You will be my heir. You will be heir together with Jesus Christ if you continue till the end. If you um, partake in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. And so God makes a covenant to Abraham. But this covenant, he made it also for, for his descendants. So that I may be God to you and your descendants. And I will give to you and your descendants the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession. As an everlasting possession as long as the earth exists. But what does it mean, everlasting? And the Apostle Paul explains very well that the land of promise back at that time was Israel, but now for us is heaven. Back at that time, he promised them that he would lead them to a land that flows milk and honey. And by faith, he promises to us that he will lead us in, he in the heavenly places. And God said to Abraham, As for you, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants, after you throughout their generations. And this is my covenant which shall, you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Now look, this proof of this covenant, the seal of this covenant. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations, he who is born in your house or bought with money from any stranger who is not your descendant. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So now, first of all, he changed his name. He gives him promises, unbelievable promises and eternal. In a personal level, he tells him that I will um, increase you exceedingly. I will bless you exceedingly. And I will give you an eternal covenant. And the land, um, and I'm giving you this land in eternity if you keep the sign of my covenant. As you see, brethren, God always um, puts this if, and this if is nothing more than the work of faith. 
which seals the faith of man. That is, I promise you something that is perfect, but you have to do something small as a proof that you have believed in my words and that you have obeyed in them. Because faith without obedience has no meaning and has no effect. Now, our circumcision today is the baptism in water. Is there salvation without the baptism? No, there is not. And we have to speak things clearly so that the so that the, we won't let anything to take us out from the Word of God. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. The baptism saves us. That's it. All the promises that God told you will come when you will do all the righteousness of God. Could Jesus Christ ever complete His work on the earth if He hadn't been baptized in water from John the Baptist? No, He wouldn't. And because afterwards the people of Israel will come then when did God um, justify him before circumcision or afterwards? He did justify him before the circumcision. So the, his justification did it came, didn't come through circumcision, but it came through his faith. The circumcision was the seal, it was his obedience. If there wasn't uh, the circumcision done, then the promises of God wouldn't have been. If there is no baptism, then there is no eternal life. Back at that time, it was the uh, baptism of, it was the circumcision of the flesh. And God wanted to go even further to the circumcision of heart. But today we have the baptism of Christ, which is for us to um, put off the body of the sins of the flesh and to go forward to holiness. This is the start. This is the first step. It's the obedience in our salvation. If we, if we don't take this step, then there's no completion of all of this. And in everything, brethren, there is a first day. There's one first day. And that is the day of obedience. It's the day of God. It's the day of that the man will confirm that he accepts the covenant of God. The man confirms the acceptance of the covenant of God. So after he told him this condition, now he comes to change all his thoughts. God is a God of changes. He changes everything. So after he gave him his promises and he changed his name and he told him that this is my covenant this is my proof um, this is a proof of your acceptance and of your obedience to me then he tells him completely different things than the things that he believe believes or thinks or he knows he comes to change him uh, completely the conditions in his life and the aspects of his life, the conditions of his life, and the future of his life. A complete change, a transformation. So he tells him, and God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, 
You shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. Why? Because I make her a mother of many nations. Because your seed As I told you that uh, through your seed all the nations shall be blessed, it will come from you and from her. Things that have no meaning for Abraham. He's 100 years old, Sarah is barren, and she cannot bear a child. Everything is finished. And the Apostle Paul says, this amazing, the interpretation of the logic of Abraham, which is for us. Which, though he had no hope from the things that he lived, he experienced, and he knew about himself and his wife, yet when he heard God who told him that you shall bear a child with Sarah, and I will make you a father of many nations, from the one hand, he had the things that he could see with his eyes, and that was the zero and the nothing. And from the other hand, he had the things that God promised him, and that was um, the perfect things. And now he has to choose. And his heart has to choose. He has to choose between nothing and everything. And this also goes for our lives. The absolute nothing. Then he went to Esau, who despised his birthright, birthrights, and the everything went to Jacob, who inherited the uh, the promises of Abraham. In our lives, there are moments that you will gain uh, nothing or everything. The absolute nothing, you will experience it if you walk um, uh, uh, by seeing the things with the things that you can see, but you will enjoy everything when you walk with the promises of God and the will of God. For example, simple things in our daily life. You get married to a woman and at some point in your life you say, I don't like her. Why? Because she became fat, because she became ugly, because she is not gentle and polite. I made a mistake that I married her. And of course, this goes um, for the man as well. But when you married her, you promised and you testified that God um, is the one who has given her to you. And your wife confessed the same also. And now, there's a crucial point. The point that you're being tested. And what will follow will be completely nothing or everything and it will depend what decision you'll make and the Apostle Paul says this very nice yet not having a hope he believed in hope that he was about to become a father of many nations according to what was spoken to him thus your seed shall be so you hope according to the words that were spoken uh, to you that God will bless you with this woman. You cannot change. God will bless you with this husband. You cannot change this, but you cannot change it. He believed and hoped in the word of God with this woman, with this husband and this church with this way of life, with these decisions, according to the will of God, blessing 
will be. Blessing will come. There is a blessing, the absolute everything. But if your heart is changed or if this doesn't fit into your heart, if the promise of God doesn't fit into your work, into your heart, then you will come to nothing. So Abram had received this promise that I will make you father of many nations. He had believed this and his righteousness, his belief had been counted as righteousness. Look, your seed will be like the stars of heaven. And now God tells him that I am about to give you a seed and this will be your seed with which I will bless you. And from the other hand, he sees himself who is 100 years old and his um, wife is not able to bear a child. Now, this is a difficult thing because what we see many times it's impossible to happen. And God doesn't want us to see with, with these eyes but he wants us to see with the word of God. He believed and hoped according to what was spoken that thus your seed shall be. And then, when you believe it, then doubt comes. But um, Abraham believed this. He said, God said so. That's what God wants. Regardless of what I want or my heart, that's what God wants. He, he remained faithful. He didn't lose his faith. He stopped thinking about being old and about the uh, how old his wife was. And for this reason, the Apostle Paul says that all things that are good, blessed, these are the things that we should uh, think. You should consider only the gifts of God, the good things. Do not let your mind to think about, I don't like this job, for example. I don't like to go to the church every day. I want to be free. I don't want to be a servant of the church, a servant of Christ. I want to live my life. Do not let these thoughts lead you from um, everything that you have to nothing. So, if you see that your children are not going well, believe that He will save you and your household and stay there. Yes, but look how my children are, are walking. Don't look at your children. Look in the Word of God. Continue in the Word of God. Grab your Word, the Word of God. God and Abraham did not consider uh, the negative things. Neither did he hesitate in the promise of God and through unbelief. But what he did was that he was strengthened in faith um, by glorifying God. How will I in be increased and be strengthened in faith? We'll do this by glorifying God for, um, for the things that we He has promised us. Believing that the things that He promised us, when we glorify Him then and try this, our faith increases. There are two ways that our faith uh, may increase. To study and hear the Word of God, believe in the Word of God and glorify Him. So he was strengthened in faith by giving glory to God and being informed uh, divinely that what God has promised, he was informed from God by the Holy Spirit. That what God has promised, he will do it. God will do it. No matter what will happen, he's strong. And for this reason, for a second time, his faith was counted as righteousness. For first time, the first time was when he told him, "Do you see these stars? You will have a child." His first response um, was that he laughed and he said to God 
He didn't have any sign of faith. He didn't have small faith. What is this that you're saying, Lord? So Abraham laughed. And he said in his heart, he didn't dare to speak it. Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might, li might live before you, and that you might bless him. His mind were stuck there. When our mind stuck somewhere, then we bind ourselves. He was stuck in Ishmael. God is trying to turn everything around and perfect him and give him unbelievable things, yet he is stuck with Ishmael. And God helps him. He said, yes. Your Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son. Yes, that's it. Your Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son. And you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with you, with him, for an everlasting covenant. I will establish my covenant to him, to this seed. And to his descendants after him, with him I will continue. With this way I will continue. Not with Ishmael. I will continue with Isaac, whom you do not see. But God promises to him. I will continue with Isaac. And about Ishmael, I will bless him. I will increase him exceedingly. He will beget 12 princes. I will make him a great nation. But my covenant, I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time next year. When Abram heard this, then he left all his other thoughts. It happened what the Apostle Paul said, that not having hope, he believed in hope in the Word of God. He changed his mindset from having the mindset that everything goes well, I have Ishmael, and all the promises of God will be fulfilled with him. Now, if this is Ishmael. Everything will be fulfilled. I have Ishmael. I can see him. I can touch him and kiss him. He was stuck with what he had created. But now the word of God comes and uproots what he believed. And I want God to uproot from us the things which we have accepted by saying that this is not Ishmael. Now I will show you who he is. This will be the son of promise. He won't be the sons of your initiative. It will be the son of my promise. You will call him Isaac. He tells him specific things. You will um, beget him um, this year. The promises of God are perfect, not just words in the air. And that's how God speaks. But, uh, this um, uh, next, next year you will have Isaac. And then Abraham changed. And right away in his mind was created this image of Isaac. And I believe that um, the next um, time he started calling Sarai as Sarah. Now, everything is confirmed in his heart. God told him so, and that's what will happen. This is faith, the assurance that we feel in our heart. I have experienced this once in my life, and that's why I can preach it, is when um, the Lord healed Alexia. Alexia was in a bad situation, and within me came a, um, an assurance that God healed her, and I couldn't pray, Lord, heal her. 
I was trying to pray, Lord, heal her, and from my mouth was coming out, Lord, thank you for healing her. And no, this happened next day when Anna believed also. And today that I was uh, reading it, um, I felt like Abram and Sarah, when Sarah believed, we, as we will see in the next lesson, it's necessary Sarah to believe also. Otherwise, the promises of God cannot be fulfilled, cannot come to pass. Those who take part um, have to believe. As M M Maria believed, and she said, um, let it be done according to your will. As Zechariah believed um, by force that he make him um, deaf and mute, and he begot a son whom he called John. It's necessary everyone to believe those who take part. So after he believed with the way that um, the Apostle Paul interpreted, the Bible says that after he stopped speaking with him, then God went up. If God hadn't finished his work, then he wouldn't have left, had left him. And right away, and this is what is pleasing before God, and then Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all who were born in his house, and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh. He didn't say we should do it some days after because it was painful to do this circumcision with they used to heat and cut the flesh there was a bleeding and pain and he did this to everyone all the male in his house servants the strangers he circumcised them all and he did to himself also in that day and so that's how people respond that God chooses them that's how Joseph responded for example who when he um, learned her that Mary was pregnant he wanted to dismiss her secretly and at that night, um, God, the angel of the Lord, visited him and said, Joseph, this is your wife, and the child that he is with her is with the Holy Spirit. And before it was morning, he took her. And he told her, take the, the, your wife and your child and leave. And he left from Bethlehem. And he told him, go to Egypt. And right away early in the morning, he went to Egypt. This is the secret, my beloved brethren, that God wants to teach us. To respond right away, to obey and do the commandment of the Lord. The same day, the same moment. That's how God is pleased. So the same day Abraham circumcised himself, he circumcised Ishmael, and to all who were in his house. And God was pleased. And after that, the Bible says that the Lord appeared to him, though he was sitting in the tent in the heat of the day. And now, from the one hand, God comes to help him so that his promise may be completed and that Sarah may believe. And from the other hand, to reveal to him what was about to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah and to Lot. So now Abraham's life has changed course, has changed course and the meaning in just one moment when he was 100 years old. Why? Because God decided to do so. Why? Because Abraham responded immediately. We should ask, my beloved brethren, these great changes in our life, of course, toward good. 
and to blessing because they can be a great change also because of a transgression and sin. When the long-suffering of God comes to an end and you also come to an end. But it is very important to ask from God and to be ready that when God will decide to make great changes, to be ready to accept it with faith and with obedience. And God will make in our life, in His, in His church, this last day will make great changes. We haven't even uh, yet come to be 99 years old. But God will do what He has promised. God will shake not only the earth but also heaven because the things that are shakeable have to go away and to stay the things that are unshakable. Do you know what it means that when the earthquake will take place and the things that are shakeable will go away to be and the things that are um, shakeable and uh, that are not shakeable? Do you understand about what kind of changes the Word of God speaks? Think about Abraham. Think about Moses. Before he went up to the Mount Sinai and when he came down, how he was. Think about the Apostle Peter and the Apostle James and all the brethren, the 120 people before the Pentecost and after the Pentecost. A great change took place. And from uh, the 500 people who saw Christ to ascend, those who those who didn't uh, move were those who stayed till they received the power of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then a great change took place also. The things that were shakable, they were gone. 380 people were gone. But the 120 people who were unshakable, they stayed and they experienced the, the, this absolute and great change. For this reason, my beloved brethren, we are waiting for the rapture of the church. But we're also waiting to see the glory of God. We're waiting to see, and we hope that this will be in our years. We believe this. If you would like to see the mountain of the house of the Lord to be exalted above all mountains, and on that mountain, God, to make a great blessing, to take away this covering because of the unbelief of man, to take this covering away, and then it will take place what was written, what is written, death was um, swallowed up in victory. Great changes are about to take in our life. Great changes. We should stay faithful in small changes so that we may come um, to be in faith in these great changes and come to this great change that will heal the will hear the trumpet of God and the voice of the archangel and then everything will change from carnal men we will become spiritual men glorious children of God brethren let us continue to worship God in a pleasing way with reverence and respect so that we may live and experience these great changes that God is about to, to do these latter days. And we should um, experience this with those who are unshakable. We shouldn't experience this with those who are shakable. May the Lord give us power. And Abraham, he was a married man, and God did great things for him. But now there is another person 
and this is the Church of Christ. God will do great things through her. For this reason, we should continue faithful in little things so that we may enjoy many things when God will decide so, when the fullness of times will come. Could this great change took place when he was 98 years old? Why? Because that's um, what was pleasing before God. That's why he's decided when he was 1990 or so that Isaac would be born when he was um, 100 years old and Ishmael would be 13, 14 years old. He didn't know when and he didn't even knew that God would visit him with these words, with this kind of words and powers. He couldn't, um, Abram couldn't even imagine this, what plans God had for him. But he chose him because he was a man of faith. So let us continue in faith, brethren, in the faith of God, in the faith of the Word of God. Waiting and hoping, even if we don't have hope, we should believe and hope that the Lord is coming to receive his church. Amen.